For this video, we're going to go through Le Chatelier's principle, and I'd like to start off by actually uh, showing two videos um, that do a nice graphic re representation of what um, Le Chatelier's principle is all about, and then actually work through some problems. what the system at equilibrium does in response to stresses. Let's return to our original example of you digging a hole and your friend refilling it simultaneously. If you start digging at a rate faster than refilling, the hole gets larger. In order to maintain a constant size of the hole, your friend must work harder to fill it faster. Following on the same idea, when a chemical system at equilibrium is stressed, the system works to restore equilibrium. This is the Chatelier's principle. The stresses are changes to the concentration of either the reactants or products, changes to the pressure, although this is only applicable to gaseous systems, changes to the temperature. Let's examine a hypothetical reversible reaction at equilibrium where reactant A reacts with reactant B to form product C and product D. If we added more A and B, the system becomes stressed and is no longer at equilibrium. To counteract the stress, the system forms more C and D in order to remove the excess A and B. The equilibrium, therefore, shifts to the right. If we added more C and D, the system becomes stressed and is also no longer at equilibrium. So to counteract stress, the system forms more A and B. Therefore, the equilibrium shifts to the left. What happens if we remove C and D as they are being produced? Or if the concentration of C and D is decreased. Please pause the lesson to think about this and resume when you are done. The system is now stressed and no longer at equilibrium. To counteract the stress, more C and D are produced, so equilibrium shifts to the right. When concentration increases, equilibrium shifts to the opposite side of the reaction. When concentration decreases, equilibrium shifts to the same side of the reaction. Changes in pressure. The stress to a system at equilibrium is only applicable to gaseous systems. For this stress, we will examine another hypothetical reaction at equilibrium, where reactant A reacts with two moles of reactant B to form product C and product D. An increase in pressure means that there is a decrease in volume, so there is less space. Equilibrium will shift to the side of the reaction with fewer moles. In our example, an increase in pressure will cause equilibrium to shift to the right since there are fewer moles, two moles compared to three moles on the left. The decrease in pressure means that there is an increase in volume, so there is more space. Equilibrium shifts to the side with more moles, so in our example, equilibrium shifts to the left. So an increase in pressure favors the side with fewer moles, and a decrease in pressure favors the side with more moles. In our next lesson, you will learn about how a system works to restore equilibrium in response to changes in temperature. In summary, the Chatelier's principle states that when a system at equilibrium is stressed, the system works to restore equilibrium. The system at equilibrium responds to changes in temperature. The Chatelier's principle states that a chemical system at equilibrium always works to restore equilibrium when it is stressed. To consider what happens to a system at equilibrium when temperature is changed, you must first consider the energetics of the reaction in question. If the forward reaction is exothermic, then the reverse reaction must be endothermic. 
Let's examine this hypothetical reaction where reactant A reacts with reactant B to produce product C and product D. With a change in heat of minus 75 kilojoules, this means that when the forward reaction occurs, 75 kilojoules of energy is released and 75 kilojoules is absorbed when the reverse reaction occurs. So an increase in temperature would mean that the endothermic reaction would be favored to remove the excess heat, therefore counteracting the imposed stress. Decreasing the temperature would cause the system to produce more energy, therefore the exothermic reaction would be favored. The dimerization of nitrogen dioxide to by nitrogen tetroxide is an exothermic reaction. Nitrogen dioxide is a brown gas, whereas dinitrogen tetroxide is colorless. What observations do you think can be made when the temperature is decreased? How about when the temperature is increased? Please pause the lesson to think about this and resume once you are done. A decrease in temperature favors the exothermic reaction, so more dinitrogen tetroxide is produced. Since it is a colorless gas, the mixture should appear paler. An increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction, so more nitrogen dioxide is produced. The mixture should therefore appear darker brown. Addition of a catalyst does not affect the position of equilibrium as it increases the rate of both the forward and reverse reactions. It only quickens the attainment of equilibrium. Let's return to the example of you digging a hole and your friend refilling it while you dig. Imagine that you are both given much larger shovels. The size of the hole still remains constant, but with each dig or fill, more soil is removed or filled. In conclusion, when the temperature of the system at equilibrium is increased, the endothermic reaction is favored. When the temperature of a system at equilibrium is decreased, the exothermic reaction is favored. Adding a catalyst has no effect on the position of equilibrium. So now let's actually work through um, a problem like you will see for your homework. Let me just move the screen a little bit down, get access to my pen. All right. Um, so, here we have a chemical equation in which we have um, sulfite uh, combining with oxygen uh, to make, uh, and I apologize, this should be SO4, there we go, um, to be producing uh, SO4, 2SO4. Uh, you notice that it is a reversible reaction, in which case it can either be a forward-moving reaction, remember forward-moving reaction, you'd have an arrow that looks like this, or it could be a reverse reaction. And in that case, you'd have an arrow uh, moving like this. So in this uh, problem, we're actually going to determine how does the equilibrium shift? Does it shift forward, we can say, to the right, being to the product side, or does it shift to the reverse, which we can say is to the left, being to the reactant side. So let's take a look at all the different scenarios. Assuming that this is now at dynamic equilibrium, we recognize a couple of things. That first of all, thermal energy is in the product side. For this reason, it means that when this reaction happens, when these reactants combine, they produce SO4 and heat. All right, so heat is produced in this one. So, with that said, we're going to look at thermal energy as an ingredient, okay, um, and therefore treat it that way, and it'll help us sh see how we can actually shift um, the equilibrium. But let's start with the first one. If I add more molecules of oxygen gas at a constant volume, I have more O2. That means that I am using, in my example that I had in class, a bigger cup versus a smaller cup to scoop this out, which way is the actual reactant going to shift? So most of you will remember that means that you use the bigger cup in that bucket. For that reason, more reactant was becoming product 
it is going to shift forward. So you simply say it will shift forward, or you can say shift to the left. Either one is fine, and it's as simple as that. Now, in using that analogy with the balance scale that you saw in the video, essentially, if I'm adding more in that balance right over here, here you have the balance. If I'm adding more oxygen, I'm adding what they did, a sort of double amount. It obviously shifts to this side, uh, excuse me, you have too much on this side, so the equilibrium will shift to the, the product side. Okay? So I think um, for most people that that's pretty solid. What would happen if you have more SO4? Then again, the balance, you would have more uh, molecules on this side. It shifts the equilibrium so that more reactants are made. So for the next one, increasing the temperature. Again, look at this uh, thermal energy as heat which is temperature. So if I make more of this, or better said, if I add more of this, that means in terms of our balance again, okay, I now have more on the product side. So how is that going to shift it over? That means that your balance is going to be off scale and that to keep it back in, or bring it back to equilibrium, you're going to have a shift Uh, reverse, you're going to have a reverse shift or to the right, and so you're going to predominantly have a reverse reaction happening. Here we have a forward reaction happening and here we have a reverse reaction happening. So, the next one. What happens if I increase the volume? If I increase the volume, you saw in that video that when they decrease the volume, they press down on it. So to, and that caused a decrease in the volume. So if I'm increasing the volume, I am decreasing the pressure. Okay? because I have more space to move around, or better said, the atoms have more space to move around. In that case, you notice over here, I have a total of three moles. How did I get three moles? Well, I have two moles here, plus that invisible one over here, versus on this side, I only have two moles. Okay, so in decreasing pressure, I have more space as a molecule to move around, which means it favors the side that has the most molecules. More space means that three molecules are able to move better uh, because they have more space, okay? So in that case, it's going to actually shift your reaction to the left. Because I have more space, it allows more molecules to be able to move around. So it shifts it to the left. This is a reverse reaction. So on the other hand, what happens if I increase the total pressure of the system? So in that case, I am now pushing down on it. I'm decreasing the volume. There is less and less space because of that pressure. And so it's going to favor the side that has the least number of moles. And so that is the SO4 side. So this one shifts the reaction. Again, just a reminder to students that at the bell, uh, all two. freshmen, sophomores, and juniors must report to their block two classes at 830. Thank you. That shifts it to the right where you have the two moles, and that is a forward reaction. So essentially, this is what you're going to be working through, and then we'll go through it in class. Good luck.